I want to, uh, and and I know we've got some that's not been here in a, a, a week or so. I just want to kind of share this with you as we go on. Um, but we, we looked at the, the word worship, and we brought this out for Thanksgiving. And really, what the Lord is trying to impress upon my heart is that if we can't learn this correctly, we're not going to get the celebration of His birth. Does that make sense? Amen. If we can't learn the worshipness, because we got to go to the manger and worship Him. Yes. Amen? Amen. That's what they did. So everything is built around worship. And so whenever I was looking at this message, the word came up, and it was an old English word, and I won't tell you how it spoke to me. The word was W-O-R-T-H-S-H-I-P. The word is worth-ship. That's what the old English word was translated into. They shortened it down because of the length of the word and because of, it's hard to say if you try to say it. But the word worship correctly is worth-ship. You're bringing something to worth to God. I'm bringing my praise. I'm bringing my heart. I'm bringing my love. I'm bringing something of value to the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. And so then I realize that then my worship becomes, as I begin to worship Him, it becomes anointed. It becomes blessed. It becomes worth something what I'm lifting up. What am I lifting Him up? Everybody this morning, the only thing that God accepts this morning back in worship is that that He gives to you. Amen. So as He gives it to me, I reciprocate it back up to Him. Yes. And it becomes my worship. So as I'm thinking about that, and I'm, and I'm trying to understand, and, and I get into the service, and, and as I said at the beginning of of, of last week that worship is not just songs it's, it's any type of, of interaction with the Lord it's any type of fellowship with the Lord it could be just sitting there in His presence quietly and that could be your worship for today but whatever that worship may be that I realize I've got to connect with God every day of this week I've got to connect with God so whenever we come into this service and we talk, uh, we we had the beginning of the uh, of the uh, drama, and then we went into the uh, to the worship, as in the uh, song part of our of our uh, uh, worship this morning. And as we were doing that, it began to fall upon my heart that if we don't worship God, there must be some underlying issues. And those underlying issues is we don't think He's big enough to do it. We don't think He's big enough to handle our problems. That's the lack of worship because He tells me to come in and worship Him yes. that He's going to do what needs to be done and I'm going to praise Him and worship Him for what He's doing. Amen. Anybody in here, is God not doing it for you this morning? Yes, amen. Anybody? Yes. Man, he's. this is good. Why? Because whenever I get in the presence of the Lord, there's the fullness of joy that appears. Yes. When I get in the presence of the Lord, all of a sudden peace shadows my life. Come on. Hallelujah. One thing that I've always did whenever I counseled with anybody is to, to make them understand you can never ever find the answers looking at the problems. Yeah. So what is worship? It's looking past your problems yeah. to the problem solver. Yeah. It's looking past your physical condition yeah. to one that made this body and he can fix it, he can replace it, he can create it, whatever he desires. He is God this morning. I shared this and I'm, I'm just going to go over this real quick. There was invitations passed out in Luke 14. They're inviting people to come to a party and the host is inviting them to come. And we're understanding that this is a type of a party 
are a type of celebration. And can I tell you this morning, what I see in worship is it is a type of celebration. Yeah. In other words, yeah. when we come in the house of God, we should be rejoicing. We should be praising the Lord and thanking Him for His goodness because of what He's done in our life. And that rejoicing will bring more blessing. Yes, yes. hallelujah. Do we understand that that's how you get a hold of God's heart? Do you think you didn't touch Jesus whenever, uh, whenever Bartimaeus cried out to Him? Yes, they did. Yes. Ooh, that touched Jesus. Everybody's else saying, you, you blind beggar, shut up. You're ruining the, you're ruining the parade. Let me tell you, this parade is fixing to get a whole lot better. Yes. Can I tell you something? When the church learns how to participate, that the church service is not a funeral. It is a party. It's a place to go and rejoice. Oh, praise God. Amen. 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 Whew. There's celebration in the Bible. Do we forget about in the Old Testament that they celebrated who every time God did something for the children of Israel, they put another celebration in order? Why? Because God loves to see His people celebrating. Yeah, right. That's good. Yeah. You thought you'd never hear a preacher say that, did you? Well, He likes to see His people celebrate. Yes. Because that shows there's victory in the camp. Amen. That shows there's joy in the in the Hearts of the men and women of God. Yes. Praise God to change our hearts and our life and the way that we see the things that we see. Can I ask you this? When, when I come in here, well, I, I'll tell you, let me, let me move on just a little bit further. Worship is also spiritual. Jesus said in Luke 24, 20 and Luke chapter number 4, verse number 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him yes. in spirit and in truth. Yes. Worship is a sacred time set apart. Now catch this. Reminding us that there are matters of eternity that are more significant. Yes. I want to say that again. Reminding us when we get a, a, a side apart with the Lord, a sacred time is set apart reminding us that there are matters of eternal significance that's greater than what I'm facing myself. Yes. Can I tell you this? And I hope this don't offend anybody. But if we could learn to get our get our compassion and our love on other people more than ourselves. Yes. God will meet those things in our life. Yes. But sometimes we're just wanting to say, Lord, I, you know, I, I've got to, you got to do it for me, Lord. You got, no, when you learn how to pray for somebody else, when you learn how to lift somebody else up, can I tell you that most of the time my prayers get answers when I go down and pray for somebody else? When I make up in my mind, okay, God, then if this is how it's got to be, then I'll go pray like this and go and be praying for that person. And all of a sudden, you didn't even realize that you're walking around praying for other people. God could just barely get you off the pew to pray for that one. Yes. All of a sudden they begin to cry and all of a sudden the Spirit lifts off of them and you feel something else and all of a sudden you realize God done touched my need. Yeah. Yeah. He done answered my prayer. And I, was so, and, and I was so worried about myself. Let me tell you something, friend. When we begin to be worried about other people, God will take care of what's going on in my life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because what happens is we become self-consumed. We, yeah. we become self involved in our life but there is greater eternal questions yes. that are more significant than what I'm facing in my life yes. reminding us that worship worship is that God is answering his people and fellowshipping with them reminding us that we need him every hour worship involves both faith and feeling I want to say that again worship involves both faith and feeling. 
It is both spiritual and spirited. Did everybody catch that? Worship is both spiritual and spirited. Yes. Amen? Sounds like a Pentecostal church, don't it? Yes. That's why I just described is a Pentecostal church. And I'll tell you what, folks. If I ever quit resembling a Pentecostal church, then we need to reevaluate some things. Amen? Amen? Amen. Why? Because we are serving the God that hung the stars in the sky. Yes. Amen. Hung the planets in the atmosphere. And yet He's small enough to live within my heart. Amen. You think of that today. Worship involves faith and feeling. <clears throat> Worship it's a proclamation. All the Word reveals God's glory. Our worship proclaims it. All the world reveals God's glory. That's what the Scripture says. But our worship begins to proclaim it. We're declaring the majesty of God. Our worship is directed both upward and outward to God and to all people. It is our means of expressing our commitment to God and our dependence on Him. Through worship, we are stating what God has done for us. When we tell people what we do on Sundays, we're admitting that we cannot effectively journey through life alone. Worship keeps us in focus, and not only in focus with our own self, but gets us in focus with God Almighty. So our heart begins to find out about what God is trying to tell me about myself instead of what I'm trying to tell myself about myself. I know that's a lot of myself. <laughs> kind of you've confused me a little bit. But listen, folks. Our commitment and our dependence upon Him. Worship is to gain encouragement to face the world. Our broken world needs to know that we have resources that, that they desperately need. I want to read that again. Our broken world needs to know that we have resources they desperately need. But how can they know if we do not show them? How can they know if we do not proclaim He is the Son of God? If we do not proclaim He is the King of Kings? He is the Lord of Lords. Worship is an act of resistance against idolatry of the age and a proclamation of what is real and true and holy. Yeah. I just want to say this real quick before I go on to the next part. And that is this. We, we use the term idol worship or worshiping of idols and, and we, we kind of link that in with the Old Testament. Let me tell you something, friend. An idol is just something you put of more importance in front of the Lord. People still have idols today. People have are still practicing idol worship today. Let me and, and, and let me tell you something. And I want to be completely honest. They have to worship something. Because God placed in us a place in our heart that must worship something. Yes. You watch people today, and if they're not involved in church, they go 90, 900 miles an hour, and they're, they're maybe a volunteer fire department uh, uh, fireman, or, 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 or they uh, go and, and, and help with, with some type of a, a, another outreach, but uh, whatever is important to them is because they've got to worship something. And that place can only be filled by the Lord. Because if it's not the Lord, you'll just keep on searching for things. And keep on searching for things. And keep on searching for things. Well, can I tell you this? Here's what I want to tell you. You have found Him. You found God. You've invited His Son Jesus into your heart. You have found Him. Now run with Him with all you got. Now 
Run with Him with all you got. You found the answer. You've got the answer this morning. You've got everything that we're in need of is in the book this morning. And we have that answer. So there's nothing. There's nothing that we shouldn't face that we should not be able to praise God through the midst of the storm. Let me tell you something. He's brought me through so many things, folks. It's, it's more than enough. It's more than enough. God has showed me His love for me. God has showed you His love for you. It's enough this morning. It's enough. It's enough. The fifth thing is, worship is an offering. We bring a sacrifice of praise to God. In Hebrews 13, 15, it says, We bring ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is our spiritual worship in Romans 12 and 1. In worship, we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves. Our singing, our prayers remind us that all we have comes from God uh, all that we have comes from God above and not from within ourselves. We offer ourselves to God in worship. We're saying yes to God and no to the broken promises of the world. Yet this offering is not to buy favor. We're not getting points for coming. It is in gratitude to God giving us new life and hope for eternity. If I could stop there just for a moment, and I think so many times we get wrapped up in church and someone coming, and I call it spiritual calisthenics, that they got to come out here and they got to get everybody revved up and worked up and all exercised up so they'll stay awake through the church service. Well, can I tell you something? If we fall in love with the Lord this morning, ain't nobody got to hype us up. Ain't got nobody got to come in and get us awake. Let me tell you something, friend. If we fall in love with the Lord all over again, and have that first love. If that be the case, and we have found, we have found that first love, then let's learn. Let's learn and offer up ourselves before the Lord. Can I tell you this? When, when we talk about worshiping the Lord this morning, I'm not talking about going into the throne room of God and just standing there. It is a bowing down process. It is an adoration process that we come before Him and we humbly humble ourselves down. Humble ourselves down. Humility. Humility this morning is a trait it is lacking in the world today. Yes. Humility. Yes. You know what humility says? Look at them, not me. Yes, amen. Look at, look at him, not me. And we're living in a world that wants to say, look at me. They're not in here right now, so I can go ahead and say this. It is amazing to me. If your last name is Sowell, you cannot go past a mirror without looking in it. Amen. <laughs> and I'm not talking about myself. <laughs> I'm just, it just that's just an example. It's not for you to go running to the back today. My goodness. Uh, I believe. Adore. Adore. Somebody please help me. Where was I? I'm here in response. I thought this was called a preacher's uh, thing is called a monologue. That means one person. Okay. Psalms 51 says the sacrifice given to God are broken in a contrite heart. The, the sacrifice that God wants this morning is our heart to be broken and contrite because He can work with that. 
It's softened. It's, it's, it's pliable. It's moldable. This morning, He wants you to have a heart that is moldable. A heart that is moldable. Pliable. Father,